Today we're going to continue the tutorial of Scratch Programming Basics. Today we're going to be talking about variables and my blocks. Variables are a way to hold data. In Scratch, they can only hold data for numbers. There are a way to make variables in Scratch hold letters, but that requires advanced programming, and we are only doing the basics for Scratch. Variables can shorten values. It can You can use variable to describe x and y. For an example, I'm going to call this y. That's the name of the variable. And I'm going to write small script here when the gray flag is clicked forever. Set y to y. So set the y. What this script is stating is set the y of the scratch card to this variable y. Okay, not to make this confusing, I'm going to rename this variable. I'm going to call it the y. The y. So set y to the y velocity. I'm just going to turn it on the screen. I will put it there in a moment. So I'm going to say when the gray flag is clicked, oops, when the gray flag is clicked, set the y velocity to zero, so that the scratch cat will always form at y zero. And I'm also going to change y velocity by nine. Since y velocity is stated out as y in this script right here, it will change the y velocity or the y level of the scratch card by minus 1. So you can see the scratch card is going downwards. I'm just going to separate this from its own so that you can kind of get clearer understanding. So you can see it always spawns back at zero. You can see it spawns zero, spawns zero, spawns zero. That's because here we said set the y velocity to zero when the green flag is clicked. Remember that the script of scratch runs from top to bottom. So it will say first when the green flag is clicked, that's the first thing that will be executed, set the y velocity to zero. That's the next thing that will be executed. In the meantime, while this hold is being executed, this will also be executed forever, change the y velocity by minus 1. If we want to increase the decreasing speed of the scratch cards, we can change the y velocity to like minus 5. This way, the scratch card will fall to the minimum y level way faster. So, I'm going to try something now. I'm going to say, wait 5 seconds. So I'm going to say, wait 5 seconds before executing what's below this. So before it will start decreasing the Y level, it will wait 5 seconds. Now it started decreasing the Y level because the timer of waiting 5 seconds has started to decrease. There's also another book that can do this, the timer. When timer, I'm just going to put this here, when timer is less than 5, forever, when the timer is greater than 5, sorry, not less than, when the timer is greater than 5, that means when 5 seconds has passed. So this block is literally just this. And if we set this to 1,100, it will also be set to 100. If we set this to 1, it will also be set to 1. It won't also be set to 1. Of course, you can change the value to your own custom. But these two mean the exact same thing. So when the timer is set to 1, oh, this, okay, and restart it. you can see one second went by before it started to continue. It pauses for one second, and then it executes the script of, wait, of decreasing the y velocity. So you can kind of get an idea of what this means. You can kind of get an idea of what this means. Now, to give you a clear understanding, I'm going to set this to y velocity. So, if I rerun the script, let me just remove this timer.
you can see the wave by velocity keeps going down but this on the other hand doesn't what is that because in the scratch background this is how low the y can go down this is how low the y level can go down which is minus two one four now that you kind of get a clear understanding I'm just gonna teach you a bit more about the set block because I've been using the change block a bit more. The show and the hide. The show and the hide are like are like to hide and to show the block like this. You can literally just put this anywhere. Then when you wanna hide it, you can hide it. When you wanna show it, you can show it. So I'm just gonna say um, when the space key is pressed, like when space is pressed, it should show the variable, and when the A key is pressed, it should hide it. Space. So you can't see this, but right now I am pressing my space and A. When I press the space, you can see that the variable reappears over here, and when I press A, the variable disappears. So that's literally just what the hiding show block do. It's not much. So now that you have a clearer understanding of variables, let's talk about blocks. Scratch tried their best to give us as many tools to make unimaginable things as possible. But sometimes these tools aren't enough. Even with all these blocks, people can just go crazy and make something unimaginable. So that's why there's a block making. The block making allows you to make a custom block for an example i'm going to call this custom block wait see. this custom block can now be used in any script it's now asking me to define the waiting so waiting is i'm just going to say repeat 10 times go to a random position this is what waiting does so when i say when the green flag is clicked Forever. Wait. Do you understand this? Define waiting. This is telling us what does waiting do. The block waiting. Tell me what does the waiting block do? When you've defined it, you can now add it to your script. So blocks are more or less a way of shortening scripts because you can just go ahead and do this and get the exact same output. But if you want short scripts, you can just do this. And now you can see it's literally going everywhere in the background. So I'm going to just use a repeat block instead of forever block. So it's going to do this just 10 times. What the heck? It's going to do it 20 times because this was supposed to be repeated 10 times. It's not only 20 times, it's going to do 100 times because this multiply by this is going to be 100. It does it so fast, 100 times, and then stops. That's because 10 times 10 is 100. So if I set this to 100, it's going to do it 1,000 times. So it's going to take a while here, but you can see it's doing it so fast. It's doing it 1,000 times. That's because whatever is here multiply by whatever is here will give you how many times it would let's say i don't want waiting to be that i want the waiting to point to the mouse pointer and move 10 steps and i want this to do forever since this is already in a forever loop i don't even have to put waiting in a forever loop i can just run the script and it will operate it like in the last video i'm going to change the scratch card I'm going to change it to more or less just the head. So it's just the head now. I'm going to put the 90 degree angle the head is facing at. This is the 90 degree angle that the head is facing at. So you'll see this arrow will forever point towards the mouse pointer. It does this because it's pointing towards the mouse pointer, but the mouse pointer is no more moving. So it's just going to keep doing that. We can also slow the script down by reducing it to like just one step. And now it will move way slower. Like way slower. If we want it to go faster, we can set it to an unimaginable speed. 
and it's so fast. It's so fast, I can't keep up with it. So, now that you kind of have an under a definition of what the blocks and variable is, let's go ahead and program something with it. In my last video, I did say that we're going to program a game with the blocks that we've learned how to use. And there are some blocks, like operators, that is very complex. Starting from here to here, these are the most complex blocks in the whole of Scratch. But I'm going to show you something a bit cool here. This Scratch car right here, I'm going to bring it to this position. I'm going to run a script and see if you can understand what the script is trying to say. I'm going to use an if and an if statement. Oh, this is correct. For every potential mouse point. We don't need an if, just need an if. So, I'm just going to see what the gear flag is clicked. Wait, finish. So, we're going to define waiting. And I'm not going to say anything. I'll see if you can understand what I'm trying to write. Over here, I'm going to grab. So, do you understand what I just wrote here? We can also not have to define the block and just make it when the green flag is clicked. So, if you want to run this script and just like use clones, you can also use clones to do the same thing. You can also do this because it's also easier. So, now that you kind of understand how blocks work, although this script is more basic, this script is very advanced, it's hard. You can still try because eventually we're going to start doing the advanced scripting. This is the final episode for Scratch Basics. The next episode, episode 6, will be the advanced version of Scratch programming. Thank you all for joining and I'll see you guys next time. Great day.